Peter's question to Jesus follows on from that well-known event in which a rich young man asked Jesus how he can be perfect, and Jesus tells him, sell your goods, give to the poor, and follow me. But he goes away sorrowful, and Jesus remarks how hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of heaven. That surprises the disciples, but then Peter realizes that he and the other apostles have left everything, so of course they will be okay. And Jesus predicts that the apostles will be great in the kingdom of heaven, and he blesses all those who do as they did. So throughout Christian history, many people have felt a call to withdraw from the world, to escape everything that might weigh down on their journey into God. And today, Saint Benedict was one of the most famous of those. At the end of the fifth century, as a young man, he fled from the decadence and disorder of Western society in the years following the collapse of the Roman Empire and he became a hermit at Subiaco, but after some years, others joined him, and he seems to have settled them into a group of small monasteries which he directed. It is said that a local priest waged a campaign of slander against him, and so that his monks might be left in peace he moved away to Monte Cassino, where he settled a new wave of disciples into a single large monastery. And there he composed the monastic rule whose influence has been incalculable. He recognizes that some people are called to be hermits and says his rule for those who live together in the monastery, is a school of the Lord's service for beginners. But that is ironic. It's the same irony as in the words of Jesus that we just heard. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold. The editor of St. Matthew's Gospel tends to compress what he draws on so as to make space for as much material as possible. But St. Mark's longer version spells out how they will be repaid a hundredfold. Now in this life, with houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, and persecutions as well. The apostles may have left small jobs and small families. In return, they will have big jobs and big families. What St. Paul calls the care of all the churches, and they will face martyrdom. St. Benedict was repeatedly taken out of his solitude to care for communities of disciples. At Monte Cassino, his first job was to work hard to restore the local people to the Christian faith. And from his monastery, he cared for the sick and the poor. And he foresaw what his monastery would suffer in the attack by the Lombards 40 years later, and perhaps even in the 20th century. Those who are called to leave the world and follow the rule of St. Benedict take on a different and a larger family, and they are called to live a holistic life of liturgy and study, work, and mutual care, hospitality, and peace. 
to do that in charity as a kind of icon for everyone of the coming kingdom, which is not me and God, but all of God's friends together in God. Because we can't be friends of God without sharing God's own vision for God's delight in all his other friends. So even hermits, or rather especially hermits, are called to hold the whole world in their hearts before God. It's true in a small way that Saint Benedict and his followers left the world. It's true in a bigger way that they helped remake the world, reclaiming land for cultivation, keeping learning alive, the work of education, offering the world a vision of peace, a holistic vision of virtue formed in the balance of work and study, prayer and welcome, all drawn together into and inspired by a liturgy that is beautiful. And that vision is still needed today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.